This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Born Heath. But before that, this video is brought to you by Paul Nadon Jr. and Doughboy2913. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So Born Heath can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Now let's read a little bit of the description. Welcome to Born Heath. This is a fictional map set in the UK. This map has a total of 46 arable and grass fields ranging in different shapes and sizes. All 46 fields have contracts. In the southern area of the map, you will find a BGA as well as a viable industrial estate where you have in-game productions and place for additional placeables if you should so wish. All in-game animals are on the map. There is a main farmyard that has two cow breeding pens and a main cow pasture with feeding robots. There is also a placeable area at the main farm. There's a sheep farm as well as a pig farm and also a horse farm area. Some terrain may be a little challenging, so choose your fleet wisely. There is a custom. There are custom items around the map. You can see if you can spot them. Collectibles are available on this map. This map does include 100 Elm Creek collectibles. And a note by the map author, this is my first map that he has made, so hope you all enjoy it. And I have to say, for being a very first map, having it released on the Giants Mod Hub, congratulations, because you've gone through the testing policy. Having it released for console is even more of an accomplishment. So congratulations, Broomy Farmer, for having that accomplishment. Now let's go ahead and jump on in. We are going to use the mods that we typically use when we look at maps. That is additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. If you happen to load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find the main farm built out exactly how you're going to see it here in new farmer mode, including all of the machinery is owned at the start. The only difference is your starting money and, of course, the fact that you do not own any land in farm manager or start from scratch. When we load into the map, we load outside of our farmhouse, which we're going to find right here. We do have a sleep trigger. And, well, we might as well just show you. Here we are, one of the 100 collectibles that you're going to find scattered all over the map. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. We take a look at the lands area. You'll see we start out by owning the main farm, which includes a placeable area. It is 16 acres in size, $389,000 to buy if you are playing in another play mode. We also own field 46. That is the only field that we own at the start. It is 20.84 acres in size, and it's going to cost you 505, nearly $506,000. Now, there are a few notes over here with respect to where we're going to be able to find certain things. We have a forest in the northwest corner of the map. We have a water by point over here in the northeast corner of the map. And then there is a placeable zone right here, as I said, at the main farm. You're also going to find the ability to place things scattered around down here. We have the industrial estate that we heard talked about in the description. We have the BGA. We have a horse farm right here. This is going to be our sheep farm. We have our pig farm located right up here, $155,000 to buy. I guess I should give you the prices. The sheep farm is $61,800 to buy, and the horse farm is $319,000 to buy. Let's go ahead and take a look. We do have all the standard crop types available to us here in Farm Sim 22. And let's go ahead and take a look at our field farmland lease screen i mispronounce that about half the time don't i so you see we own farmland 12 which includes field 45 it is 8.43 hectares in size then we have farmland 19 which is the main farm we're going to go ahead and take a look at the rest of the bible farm lands see how big they are if they happen to correspond with a field what field number 
the farm land includes and then how much each of those is going to cost us. Now, overall, it does look like the fields and farmlands are going to be fairly expensive on this map, costing a couple hundred thousand dollars a piece. I've seen a couple small ones that are a little bit less than that, but overall, you can probably expect to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars when you go out to buy a piece of farmland. Now, as far as our field calculator, we have field 45, which is 6.45 hectares in size. And we can scroll, slowly scroll through this list to see all of the other viable fields and then how big they are. We can then go back to the farmland lease screen to then cross-reference that with respect to how big and how expensive those farmlands are. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how the soil map is applied to this map. Now, according to the log, this is using the generic soil map that is a part of the Precision Farming mod. And you can see we have quite the array of different soil types scattered around a bulk of the field. So you're going to have a pretty interesting time in keeping up with your nitrogen seeding levels and fertilization levels if you do not use the automatic application mode. Let's go ahead and take a look at our crop calendar. We do have the standard Farm Sim 22 crop calendar available on this particular map. And if we take a look at our prices screen, you will see that we do have the ability to sell a bulk of our base game products, crops, and animal outputs to various sell points, multiple outputs for eggs, wool, and milk, silage, hay straw, and grass. And then when we get down here to our production areas, we do indeed have the ability to sell each and every production that we can possibly produce on the map, which is great to see. There are 12 built-in production items on the map, and we're going to talk a little bit about that when we get a little further into the video. We do have multiple buy points for bulk lime, and we do have multiple sell points in order to sell our stones if we do play with stones enabled. As far as our Starting equipment, it is all new. None of it is leased. We own everything, which is great to see. We do not have any animals at the start, but we do have a fair number of animal pins available. As I said, we had a pig farm with two pig styes. We have the cow farm here, which has two breeding pins and the cow pasture with feeding robot. We have a sheep farm and then a horse farm. We do have contracts available on the map and we do not own any production chains at the start. As I said, and as we have seen, this map does include 100 collectibles. After we open the gate, let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. Try to get a little bit further away from the babbling brook back there. We start out with the John Deere 6230R, a pair of those, and the Fence 714 Barrio. We have the Kloss Tryon 720 Harvester that is paired up with the Convaflex 1080 Grain Header. We then have the Nardi N6035 Header Trailer for our Grain Header. We have the JCB 54170 Agri Pro Telehandler. We have the Half Pipe HP20 Trailer. We have the all-rounder flatline 600 cultivator, then the Rapid A800S cedar. We have the Dalbo Power Roller 1230HD roller, the Breedall K105 fertilize and lime spreader. We have the Pottinger Novacat A10 Crossflow butterfly mowers, as well as the Novacat 301 AM ED Pro front mower. We have the GF8712 tether. We have the GA4731 wind rower. Then we have the Zelon CFS 2501DO forage wagon. For our telehandler, we have a universal bucket, pallet fork, and bale fork. And then we round it all out with a trio of 1,000 kilogram front weights. Now this map does not include any mods that are associated with the map. As we can see in the mods and DLCs, there is nothing tied to the map. And we do not own any leased items at the start. Let's head on up the hill here and check out the starting farm. Now, with respect to can you customize the farms? For the most part, but not entirely. So, for example, here at this farm, the grate is permanent. The hedges 
are permanent. While they do not have collisions, we just cannot sell those. We can sell the farm house down there. We could have also sold the gate down there, but the stone wall is also permanent, as is the parked car that is down there. Now, as far as buildings and other things go here at the main farm, we can sell everything except for three items. And I'm going to show you those two or three items here in a little bit. So we have a fuel tank. Of our shed with some of our starting equipment. Nice little collectible. Give you a little head start there. Then we have a base game cow pasture here. This is the large cow pasture with feeding robot. So we really don't need to go over as to where all the triggers are located for this particular structure. We have our manure heap. This wheelbarrow fill of stuff. This is one of the things that will not sell. We can sell the manure heap. We can sell the building. Sadly, the wheelbarrow is stuck and remains. 320 cows in this particular building. I think that maybe has been adjusted up from the default. And then as far as other decorative items that we cannot get rid of, the milk cans. We can sell the building, but the milk cans will remain here even if the building is gone. We have our hayloft. We have a large storage tank for our slurry. We've got our tractors. Then we have two breeding pins, 45 cows apiece. We have our water trough, food trough, our milk point. We have a base game farm silo. We also have a storage silo for solid fertilizer. We have a storage silo for seed or mineral food. Two silage bunkers. Nice light there to light everything up late at night. This building is the third thing at this farm that we cannot sell. We can sell the trigger, the maintenance trigger, but the building does remain. So we've got our JCB there, JCB tools, three bay shed, and then we have our base game chicken coop. Do have a charging station if we happen to have any electric vehicles on the map. And that is our main starting farm. 360 chickens. Now, before we move away from the main starting farm, let's go ahead and check our animal food requirements. See if they are doing anything special here. I think it looks pretty straightforward. Let's check the build mode far as our ground textures go. It's a pretty standard FS22 ground textures, as well as plants. I don't think there's anything custom here with respect to the map. Those are all base game cell points, production areas, and such that are just included on the map that are showing up here in the shop. All pretty standard there. There. So let's go ahead and get set up for the fly around. We're going to fly around the map, take a look at it from above, come back to the vehicle shop, jump in our Mahindra, and do our drive around. Get a little bit of altitude and do our 360. 
as the map author said, we do have some varied terrain on the map. You may want to kind of step up your general horsepower levels with respect to what is being suggested for the horsepower. Now, I'd say that the terrain isn't super extreme, at least not at the point that we're seeing here. There are some pretty good sized hills on the map, but overall, I wouldn't think that I would call it super extreme with respect to the inclines. Now here we have our main farm. We have a horse pastures. And then to get to the placeable area, which is just outside of the main farm, you can run along this access road here by the two horse breeding areas. Then we have a fairly large placeable area here that we could further expand our industry, we could further expand our farm storage or animal pins, or whatever we should so wish. A little bit of altitude and make our way around the map. Now, with respect to production that is being built in, this map does include 12 built-in production items. We have a joinery. We have a bakery, a sugar mill, a dairy, an oil mill, a tailor, great processing center, a grain mill, a cereal mill, the spinnery, the sawmill, and the BGA. Now, down here we have the pig farm. We have two large pig buildings. We have, again, the large slurry tank and then several sheds. We have our animal dealer located over here, as well as our animal cell point. And that is right, people. You are not mistaken. With his very first map released, we have animated animals. Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity diggity dog. We've got animated pigs, we've got sheep and cows. Cannot say how much I just absolutely love seeing this. We don't have just a completely empty, lifeless animal cell point. We have a rookie map maker releasing his first map with animated animals at the shop. We've got our dealer trigger. We've got our animal dealer cell point for other things. We're going to continue to follow the road up. Our fuel station down on the lower level there. We're coming up here to the viable forest where we can do a little bit of forestry. And we keep bringing the road around. Here we're at the upper level. We're going to have a grocery cell point. Coming across the northern edge of the map now, if we take a look to the south as we continue to move across. Like seeing some various things in the fields. We've got like a tree here, a little knoll on the field. We've got a kind of a big rock that obviously no one's going to be able to to get rid of so it's kind of invading into the agricultural area so we have our grocery cell point our spinnery right there now this is listed on the map as a garden center and it's listed here we have dump icons so it would imply that this is a selling station. But if we look at the PDA, we have a shop icon, which is a little confusing, I think, to players. So here we have a sell point icon. Here we have a garden center. If we go to our prices screen, if we go to something like, let's say, potatoes, right? Clearly those are potatoes. So if we go to our potatoes here, we don't have an entry for garden center. We have an entry for potato sales, which is what I think we have here. But we also don't have the ability, oddly enough, to tag it. So I'm not really sure why that is different, but we have potatoes, we have sugar beet sales, we have grass sales, we have straw sales, slurry sales, and manure sales all up here at the garden center. 
And if we look at those commodities in our prices screen, we have potato sales, we have sugar beet sales, we have grass and hay sales, we have straw sales. Come down here to our manure, guess what we have? Manure sales, so slurry, slurry sales. So we kind of have a theme here. I think that's where all of the air quote sales sell points are. Just don't know why we can't tag them. Kind of an oddity. We have a nice custom garden center sign here. Nice little posters, decorative items inside of there. I like the ability, I like the use of one of the grocery sell point buildings as the garden center. Then we have a campground sell point. Pretty good details here with the campground. Some nice playground equipment. Coming across the top east corner of the map now, we have cell point. We have a water point. We have our stone crusher. One of our bulk line points, we have a biomass heating plant. We have our dealer located right there. We're going to come back to our vehicle dealer here in a little bit. Come down the eastern side of the map. Our main starting farm is located off in the distance over there. We have one of our grain cell points located right there. But what I want to really show you make sure that you definitely don't miss is along this road coming down the eastern side of the map again we have a nice hillside here and what that's right these aren't static these are moving. We have animated deco sheep here on this hillside. These are not sheep we own. These are just deco sheep just hanging out on this hillside. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think when I was doing a map tour, all I was thinking was, um, yeah. Debut map maker does a mic drop on well-known map designers. Animated animals at the shop, boom. Animated animals just on a random hillside, boom. Let's kick it up a notch. So here we have the sheep farm. Now we can sell everything here except the fence, the wall, the farmhouse, and the garage. We can sell the two sheds there. We can sell the sheep pasture and we can sell the small shed there moving down the southern edge of the map we have our industrial estate as the description says we have like a restaurant cell point down here and then we have a lot of our production we have our grape processing our oil mill we have another bulk lime buy point we have our dairy we have our sugar processing we have our tailor our grain mill, our cereal factory, our bakery. Then we have the BGA. And there is a decent amount of just extra space here. Everything is kind of spread out. Now we could buy this and put down other production areas. Should we so wish. And that is going to conclude our aerial tour of the map. I'm going to go ahead and make my way across to the dealer which is where we're going to pick back up we have a shop trigger right here at the front door let's go ahead and lease our mahindra you're going to see that our vehicle has a decent area to spawn in at although i would be a little cautious about buying larger equipment because you do have a, not really a narrow exit here, but a very gated exit. 
So we've got a rock wall on the one side, and we have a fence on the other side. We're definitely not getting out of this without basically being sure that we have plenty of room to get it around. And then if we look down the road, we do have fences, walls, and other such pretty close to the road edge. So again, you want to make sure that you're not running down with super wide pieces of machinery. Now on the other side of our shop, we do have our customized cell repair trade and repaint triggers. Let's go ahead and hop on in. Shoot across the street. This is where we're gonna have our water fill trigger. We're going to be able to fill up with water. And then we have the wholesale market cell point. this road, this unassuming dirt road behind the dealer, because this road is what's going to take us down to the grain mill cell point. This road runs along the water's edge, the waterway, and then the main road on the other side of the water. But this is the only way in and out of this particular subway. So here we have our dump station. Now we're gonna have to loop our way around and back out. Now, you need to kind of pay attention to where you are and where the various roads are because a lot of the ways to get around this map is a one-way ticket. So, for example, in order to get to the mine point, the stone cell point, as well as the biomass heating plant, is in the extreme northeast corner of the map. We're going to have to come down a fair bit on this main road in order to get where it forks off, then go up the hill on the other side of this lake to get to that point over there. So we're going to go actually this direction. because I do want to get to the sawmill and then we're gonna have to double back again in order to get to the cell points that are up here on the upper hill ledge, the upper ledge there. Because in my kind of look around the map, I didn't see an easy way to get up there other than then back by the wholesale market. So here we have our sawmill and our joinery. We have Johnny's joinery. So this is the base game carpentry building. So we have our interactive icon, our pallet spawn point. We have our dump station, our log cell point, all right there. Over here we have our sawmill. So we have our dump station and our wood cell point. We have our interactive trigger. We have our wood chip point. Now 
Let's double back once again to the wholesale market. And we'll take the road that then takes us up across the northern edge of the map. I gotta remember. I gotta remember this traffic is brutal and they're on the wrong side of the road. Now this map does include two custom vehicles, one of which is right there. A red van that is tied to the spinnery. So some branding on the side. And then we have the tipping truck there that is tied to the sawmill. So it's nice to see the custom traffic that's kind of tying you into various businesses around the map. So coming up here we have this kind of trailer park area, campground. A playground. I mean, I feel a little ashamed that you're probably stealing a wooden toy from a kid that lives in that trailer over there. I mean, you may or may not, you know, feel bad about that. But uh, at the end of the day, it's a million dollars, right? I mean, he's also left another toy here, you know, at this building. I really feel bad for the guy. So we've got our campground cell point there. That's the name of it. We've got the garden center. We kind of took a look at that during the fly around. So it's cell points for potatoes, sugar beet, silage, hay straw, grass, and slurry, as well as manure. There we have the Berneath Spinnery. This is the red vehicles, the red trucks that are running around. Yeah, we gotta be our own gate boss. So we have our base game spinnery, but it is branded, so that's probably why it's showing up in the shop. So we've got our dump station, our interactive icon, our spawn point for our fabric. Then we have our Grocery Mart cell point, located up here to the left. So this one tactic that map makers can employ to make the map feel bigger is to restrict basically where you can go and how you can get to certain things, requiring you to go just in specific locations. So here at the docks, we have our cell point for the Grocery Mart. So in order to get anywhere up here on the northern side of the map, we've got to basically drive all the way up to either the wholesaler or make our way and wind around. And then we'll eventually be able to get back down to the main map level. But we've got to either go down the hill where we don't have a fence because we've got fencing down there now we can't just you know turn left and bail oh, 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 unless we just completely wreck and then we're done for attraction. We'll just ignore that we should have tipped. Uh, 
that is dangerous. Danger zone. So here we have the other area that we could make our way. But we're going to continue on because we have our animal dealer. Just further up the road. come between these I guess these are like apartments something pretty narrow lane into there we have our animal dealer and as I was praising it earlier with our animated animals we have our dealer trigger we have our dealer cell point A little bit of a ro roller coaster coming down the hill. And we have our fuel. And our pig farm is over here on the left. So, with respect to the pig farm, we do have the ability to sell all of these buildings that you see here. We do not have the ability to sell the solar shed, nor do we have the ability to sell what would be, in theory, the farmhouse for the pig farm. There aren't any sleep triggers here or anything. So this is permanently embedded on the map, but if we do own the farm, we could put down a sleep trigger here if we should so wish. So we've got some sheds. We do have two base game pig areas. They're gonna be set up the same gonna hold 270 pigs while we're here let's go ahead and take a look we are right here at our pig area if we continued on this road it would have taken us back down to our main starting farm and then this is a road that comes in behind and below the sawmill so here's a shop here is the wholesale market we could have made a left here and kind of shortcutted back here to the main farm or back here to where we are right now. We have our manure heap, then a large flurry tanker. Could probably clear out these trees and possibly maybe put down a third pig building, should we so wish. Again, all of that can be sold. The fencing stays around. Now let's make our way down to the southern part of the map. At this point, we've got pretty much just agricultural fields until we get all the way to the bottom of the map where we will have our horse farm. So with respect to our scoring, we're giving the map a full point on our production points. We have 12 production points built in. Oh, that field's got some hoopty humps. We have 12 production points built in. We have 
areas where we can put other production on the map. We do have the ability to sell all the base game props that we can grow all of the base game production. Items, animal outputs and such. So the map is going to get a full point there. With respect to can the farms be customized, that is where we're going to have to fault the map a little bit and we're probably going to give the map a half a point. We're definitely going to give the map a half a point with respect to being able to customize the farms. While we can sell most things, certain things we cannot get rid of and that really does impede one's ability to really make the player have as as dynamic a possible play experience as possible so here we are at the horse farm we can sell that building the red building we can sell the garden shed we can sell the electric station in front of the garden shed but the house sticks we can sell the large horse pasture but the riding area stinks so while we could sell a fair bit of this area to maximize on our ability to customize it certain things are going to stick around to give you a little bit of a of a reminder as to what this area originally was so we have 16 horses in this large corner pasture standard base game horse pasture don't really need to go into a lot of details on those trigger areas and here we are coming into the industrial park so we have our biogas plant Make our way over the scale. And once we buy the biogas plant, the triggers will pop up. So we have our digester. We have our silage bunkers. Two large three-sided silage bunkers. One there, one across the way. We have our dump point for our slurry. We have pickup point for our digestate and sneak across this rather narrow stone bridge into the rest of this area so we have our bakery base game production bakery we have our cereal factory base game production cereal factory here we have our grain mill so we have our pallet spawn point we have our dump station and our interactive trigger for the grain mill we have a base game tailor a base game dairy base game sugar mill over there Another bulk lime buy point. Then we have a factory cell point. We have a great processing facility. And then we have our oil mill. And that is down here at the industrial area. We can buy this area. We can further expand this area by putting down additional production buildings, sheds, storage, you name it, it is possible. Let's make our way over to the sheep farm, which is just past field 46. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jeez, people. Traffic, you are brutal. We 
again as I was saying the roads are roads are a little narrow things are fairly close to the roads that do have collisions so you may find yourself a little challenged in moving around the map um, especially with traffic on if you're using anything you know larger than, than a single lane to our restaurant Getting in and out of these areas with anything larger than a, you know, a small pull behind trailer may be a bit of a struggle also. I don't know if you're going to be coming through here with a large semi trailer or a road train of trailers. So we have field 46 to our left. Our sheep farm directly ahead. Sixty-five sheep. Then we have our food trough, but then we have our wool spawn point off to the side here, no doubt. Oh, sorry, our wool. Wool is right there. There is our wool. I was almost going to say something about the markers not being there. Uh, see, they were hidden here in the grass. Hidden in the grass. Just like map makers used to hide eggs. Farm Sim 17 in the grass. As we mentioned during the fly around, this is kind of the homestead part of the sheep farm. We can sell the two buildings, but we can't get rid of the farm house itself. Or the stone wall. So again, we lose a little bit of that ultimate flexibility when talking about the being able to sell everything. In the extreme southeast corner of the map, do have a another cell point and this I believe is the farmers market yes farmers market and here we have that road that I was mentioning that we're gonna have to take we're gonna go all the way back to here then we're gonna need to come around the main road this is the, the hillside where the sheep are located. We're gonna have to do a little chicane here around this big rock. And then we will have the ability to spit, split off from the main road here, which will then take us up and around the lake to our final area of interest. Might as well do a little ink cab driving while we make our way over there as far as merging fields together I don't know how much of that is going to happen here on this map it seems like a lot of the fields are separated out by by hedges which are not going to be able to be removed by fences or other kind of natural blockades As soon as we turn the corner down here, we'll see our lovely sheep up on the hillside. The 
to get to field one, 42, 43, 44, we have to go all the way back there where we took the, the road that forks off to go up to the sheep, the sheep farm. There's no other way to get to those from here. So we've got the animated sheep up on the hillside. Really neat way of doing something with what would other sides just be you know, a grassy hillside with some shrubbery growing. And a few trees. We have our rock chicane. And then this road that is coming up is going to take us back to the main farm and ultimately would lead us over to the pig farm. There we have the grain mill that we looked at earlier that we had to get to from just behind the dealer. There's the road that we took to get to there. This is then going to take us around to our final point of interest. Do you have that road, which is going to take you back up to field one. Running along the lake side here, let's talk about the final scoring. Buildings where appropriate are using the new texture technique. Yes, they are. There's a few buildings scattered here and there that are not, but overall they do not overly impact, in my opinion, the playing experience. And then we have our interactive triggers clearly marked. I'm gonna go ahead and say yes they are. I would, you know, if we were being nitpicky, we would wanna see the, the corner markers everywhere that we also had our floating blue icons. But overall, I think they are clearly marked and therefore we know exactly what's going on. So we're gonna give the map ultimately a score of four and a half out of five. A very, very respectable score for your Maiden map release. So we've got another bulk line by point. That kid is leaving his toys everywhere. Maybe we need to go around and collect them so they can give them back to him. And we'll get a million dollar reward. That's a good way of looking at it. Then we have our Stone Crusher. So guys, let me know down in the comments below. What do you all think of Born Heath. And can we make it? Cross the pedestrian bridge. Oh, yeah. We might be a little overweight. We'll just suck our gut in and uh, pretend that we're 20 pounds lighter. There we go. And we get taken to the back. And until next time. Happy farming.